Thank you for joining us at Community On Demand. It's Christmas time again. Today, Pastor Dan will be taking a look at a traditional Christmas passage from the Bible, Isaiah chapter 9, and showing us the prophecies about Christ and His thousand-year reign here on earth. This message was recorded during a live Sunday morning service at Community. Let's listen in as Dan begins. You know, back in 1996... 23-year-old Kevin Plank, who was a special teams uh, captain of the University of Maryland, uh, got the idea of a new clothing line when he noticed that his compression shorts stayed a lot drier than the shirts and the jerseys that he was wearing. And, and so he got the idea of a new clothing line uh, that would what they call wick the moisture away from the body uh, when, they were, when they're exercising. Uh, and, and so that was his, he wanted to use a synthetic fabric uh, that would cause this to happen. And so he came up with a new brand, uh, the Under Armour brand uh, is what he came up with, and he began selling it out of the trunk of his automobile, just trying to get people to buy the brand. And at the end of 1996, he kind of had a breakthrough because one of the sports teams uh, bought $17,000 worth of his uh, clothing line out of the truck of his car, and he was off and running. And, and then by 2015, he, he was able to net sales of $215 million, and now he becomes a formidable competitor with other brands such as Nike and Adidas and Reebok. And so he decides to go public. And as they go public, by the end of 2021, uh, he was able to net sales of $5.57 billion. And now anywhere you go, you look around and you see the little use, you know, and you think, what is that? Well, that is his brand, Under Armour. Uh, Logo My Way is the, is the, the ones that, that, that came up with that. And let me read to you what they say about this brand. It says, Un- Under Armour has attached meaning to their logo because it is a symbol of speed, strength, and, and uh, athleticism. People are proud to wear clothing that displays the Under Armour logo because they see it as a message about their own lifestyle and interest. Branding works. And in, in fact, during the, 16, during the 2016 presidential uh, campaign, Donald Trump came upon the idea of branding and successfully used branding to, to help him get elected to the 2016 uh, uh, 45th president of the United States. Now, all over America, be friend or foe, everyone virtually un- knows what the mega brand is, right? Make America great again. It's not a bad brand, uh, you know. And, and, uh, and so branding works. Branding is effective. And when I think about branding and, and uh, trademarks, especially in government and politics, I'm usually thinking this. I'm thinking liberal, conservative, libertarian, you know? Or I'm thinking Republican, Democrat, socialist, communist. I mean, that's what I'm usually thinking when I'm thinking about political brands. Everybody's got a political brand out there. And, and, and so uh, the, the thing is that branding, trademarks, and, and, and labels are part of our life. I mean, we, we gravitate toward them, and they work. Today, <coughs> our community uh, Christian choir, our Christmas choir, sang a jazzy little song a while ago. Did you like that? The name of that song was Wonderful Counselor, which was, it was originally a, uh, an old spiritual song. In fact, uh, the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir does that if you go on the internet and listen to it. And a little bit different. We're a little more jazzier than they are, you know. But it's about Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. So let's go there and read that passage of Scripture. Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6. Here's what it says. 740 years, by the way, before Christ was born. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, 
and the government will be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Here Isaiah predicts the birth of Christ and then twice mentions his role in the government. Did you notice that? <clears throat> Isaiah <coughs> predicts that one day Christ will assume and run the government. Thank the Lord. I look forward to that day. In Isaiah 9, 6, this Hebrew word for name, it says his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, blah, blah, blah. Okay. The Hebrew word for name is Shem. If you look it up, it's unusual. It says by word, by word. You start thumbing through and, and, and looking at other translations, you come up with the Arabic translation. The Arabic translation is Wasama, and it means, are you ready for this? A brand or a trademark. Whoa. After announcing that Christ will one day assume and run the government forever, Isaiah uses branding to describe the coming thousand-year kingdom of Christ on earth. By the way, mentioned four times over in the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verses 3 through 7. And then through eternity in the new heaven and new earth. In this passage that we sing about up here, wonderful counselor, in this passage, we will find five names, brands, trademarks for Christ and his coming kingdom. Kind of like the under armor brand. So let's just, let's play off of that for a moment and have a little fun, okay? A few minutes and we're done. There are five things about Christ and his coming kingdom and millennial kingdom that is talked about here in Isaiah chapter 9. Number one, it will be unimaginable. His name will be called Wonderful. You know, you know following the tribulation period after Christ returns, inaugurates his kingdom, people will be amazed, astonished. They will be awestruck at the, uh, at, at, at the wonder of Christ and his kingdom. Have you gone back and looked at some of the things in Isaiah that will be about this kingdom? Satan will be gone, at least for a thousand years. That'll be good right there. <clears throat> Satan will be gone. Political corruption will be gone for at least a thousand years. We could use that right now. Um, Chris, well, let me say it this way. Faithful Christians, authentic, uh, integrity Christians, will be actually running the government during the millennial kingdom. Whoa. You know? Animals will be tame. You want a pet tiger? This is the time. You know. The environment will be like the Garden of Eden. People will be healthy and live upwards of a thousand years during the millennial kingdom. I mean, we're going to be walking around and we're going to be going, whoa, oh, Wow, we will be say this is so wonderful. It will be a brand of the kingdom that is to come. Secondly, it will be undergirding. His name will be called Counselor. The, the Greek Septuagint is a little bit different. Let me tell you about the Greek Septuagint. The Greek Septuagint is a Greek translation of the, of the Old Testament that was done about 250 years before the birth of Christ. By about 70 guys, that's why they, they call it the Septuagint, by so many scholars. But it's, it's kind of unusual here because in their translation, <coughs> the term is, uh, he, his name, <coughs> that's hard to sing and then come up and speak afterwards, Okay. <laughs> 
His name will be called, according to the Septuagint, messenger of counsel. It's very interesting. We talked about this uh, uh, when we were doing the feast. We talked about this in the Feast of Tabernacles. It's very interesting. In Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 16, it explains that every year during the millennial kingdom, during the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, the Feast of Tabernacles is back in October the 9th, uh, 9th through the 16th of, of, of this year. But every year, during the Millennial Kingdom, during the Feast of Tabernacles, there will be a summit in Jerusalem of all leaders, all world leaders. By the way, like I said a moment ago, that most Christian leaders, authentic, faithful Christian leaders, and there will be a there will be a summit and worship service in Jerusalem, and it will last for seven days. So the question is, what do we do for seven days? Well, here he says he, his name will be called Counselor. This summit will be led by Jesus himself on the temple grounds for that seven days. And I am imagining it will be something like this. It will be like a summit or a conference where that we're, we, we go in and he speaks to us. We do some worship. He speaks to us and gives us counsel, advice, and wisdom on some of the responsibilities and problems that we're having wherever we're working, wherever we're, wherever we're, we're ruling and judging and, 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 uh, and, and our responsibilities. And, and, and when he does it, we're going to say, why didn't I think of that? Yes, yes, that's what I need. Thank you. We'll be calling him a messenger of, a, 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 a messenger of counsel. He'll be telling us and teaching us, and we'll be, I got it, I got it, I got it, and we'll run back to the woodlands, and we'll be you know, administering what he has taught us to administer. Wonderful. Counselor. It will be unconquerable. His name shall be called Mighty God. Here Jesus is branded, labeled, identified as God Almighty. Do you see that? You ever heard anybody say, Jesus never claims to be God in the Bible? Boom, right here. His name will be called Mighty God. This passage devastates the, the doctrine of Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnessism, and any other theological liberalism that denies the deity of Christ. This is where you go. You'll find it right here. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 20, uh, 11 through 21 describes the battle of Armageddon where Christ returns and seemingly as we read it, it talks, he will defeat his enemy by the words of his mouth, the sword coming out of his mouth. So I'm picturing this like this. He's coming back, the battle of Armageddon, and he begins to speak his word and people and his enemy and the Antichrist and their armies just begin to crumble and disintegrate and are destroyed. The power of his word some 2,000 years ago, Jesus came as a little baby in a manger. He is coming back as a mighty lion in majesty that will speak. Almighty God will speak, and it will be, he will be unconquerable. There will be no coups. There will be no uh, uh, revolution because he will be an absolute power as God Almighty. So, it will be unimaginable, ungirding, unconquerable, and it will be unending. Here it says his name will be called Everlasting Father. Here Isaiah emphasizes the, the importance, it, it, this, this is unusual, he emphasizes the importance of stable, solid, firm, committed fatherhood. You see this? This is a trademark of his coming government in the Millennial Kingdom. Family will be the trademark. And stable fatherhood in the family will be a trademark of the culture during that time. According to the U.S. Census, this last one they did, 18.4 million children in America live in a home without a biological step or adoptive father in the home. That is the tragedy in America. And guess what? As Americans, we lead the, the, the world in fatherlessness. We're a failure in the area of father, but that's not going to be the case in the kingdom. <clears throat> but he, he, he will show us. We will watch him. He will demonstrate. He will be the example of, of what a father should be. 
fathers. <clears throat> he will give us the example of supportive sacrifice, spirituality, and sensitivity, and it will be like family. Our, our, the, we will serve together and love together as a family led by someone like him. We will be heirs and joint heirs with Christ. So, it will be unimaginable, undergirding, unconquerable, unending, and it will be unburdening. His name shall be called Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government, and peace, <clears throat> there will be no end. One of the trademarks of the American government, I am sad to say, is that we have been under the constant burden <clears throat> of war for decades. According to a study by the Brown University of, uh, in, in Providence, Rhode Island, since 9-11, this is staggering, the war on terror and the war that we as Americans have been in has cost the American taxpayers $8 trillion. <clears throat> Are you ready for this? And it's cost over 900,000 lives. Constant war. We've been incredibly burdened with war on terror in Iraq and Iran. A few years ago, we were under the threat of war with North Korea. Today, it's Russia and China and Iran. And it's just not going to stop until the Lord comes. <clears throat> when will it end? It will end when the Prince of Peace is sitting on the throne. One of the trademarks of the government of Christ is there will be no more burden of war for a thousand years, then for eternity. We will not have to worry about the safety of our families and our country. According to Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, Christ will government and his, uh, he will govern the world and it will be as we have said he will be unimaginable, undergirding, unconquerable, unending, unburdening. His trademark will be wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. I think I want to invest in that kingdom, don't you? <clears throat> you know, thinking about Under Armour, you ever think when some cool idea comes up like that, do you ever think, man, I wish I'd have thought of that? <laughs> Always. <laughs> Or even better yet, do you say, man, I wish I'd have known Kevin Plank back there in 1996, and I just would like to have invested a little bit of money in his, in his idea, you know? Do you realize that the Under Armour logo was actually formed accidentally? Kevin has a brother by the name of Scott, and, and so he was pitching his idea to Scott, and Scott said, this is a great idea. But, but Scott <clears throat> misheard him. See, see what, what, what Kevin was doing is he was thinking of a brand, and the brand that he thought of was, under, was body armor instead of under armor. But his brother Scott heard him say under armor instead of body armor and went to logo uh, myway.com and began working the under armor uh, it, instead of the body armor, and they came up with the design. It was an accident, a good accident. Kevin used up all of his credit cards, mortgaged everything he had, trying to get this business going. Scott went and took $13,000 worth of savings and invested it in the company. And Scott retired in 2012 owning four and today he owns 14 million shares of Under Armour stock they went public he is worth 128 million dollars over $13,000 investment back in 1996 wow hey as we celebrate christmas there is a brand I want to tell you about. His name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And I am telling you right now, 
I've been, I've been watching this brand for 50 years, and it's about to happen. And today, if you will invest in this brand, I'm telling you, you will not be sorry. When the Lord returns, begins setting up his kingdom, and it begins to grow, and you are invested, you say, how do I invest in his brand? Well, it's obvious. Serving the Lord, supporting his ministry, praying, doing now what you'd be doing then, all except you're, it's going to be better then. And what, what will happen is that about 800 years from now or even 100 years from now, we'll be saying, wow, this is awesome. I'm glad Pastor Dan stood up there and told us about this investment because making this investment is the greatest thing I've ever done. Hey, we're going to go into Christmas, seven days, Christmas shopping, all that stuff. We're going to be all stressed out and stuff, but I want you to keep your mind on that little baby that was born some 2,000 years ago. Isaiah said, for unto us a son is born, a, 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 a son is born, a child is given. <clears throat> and and it, it says it's going to reap an investment in the millennial kingdom. I would encourage you to invest. I would encourage you to be part of that. I want to encourage you to buy in because you'll be glad you did when the Lord returns. On behalf of Pastor Dan and the folks at Community, thank you for joining us today at Community On Demand. Feel free to share this link with others and please know you are always welcome to be our guest during a live service any Sunday morning at our campus in the Woodlands, Texas. For more information, just click on the link www.cbcwoodlands.org. I hope you will again join us at Community On Demand.